Destiny can be a mysterious thing. Some will follow it, while others will stray from that path and write their own story. These two seem to find a sweet spot right in the middle of those two options. Meet Aang, the Avatar. And Poe, the Dragon Warrior. Which of these two legendary warriors will win in a battle to the death? This is Fictional Fights! Earth, Water, Fire, Air. Only one can master all four elements. Meet Aang, the Avatar! Uh, Leo, you need to work on your script writing. You just made Hera say this less than 30 seconds ago. Sheesh! Each Avatar is given that role in order for them to do something great. However, Aang wasn't quite ready for that responsibility. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. Well, you can't exactly expect a child to get all pumped up and excited when he has to stop a Fire Lord from starting a war! Aang ran away and ended up frozen in an iceberg for 100 years, until he was discovered by Katara and her brother Sokka. Sokka and Katara traveled around the world with Aang so he could master all four elements and fulfill his destiny! Luckily, it seems that Aang had a bit of a head start, as he was already a master of airbending. He can create wind, use the air to fly with his glider, and even create little air spheres that he can ride on! Here, uh, that looks fun! I want one! Sure, just ask Santa for complete control over all the elements of the Earth, so you can go to war and stop an evil Fire Lord. On second thought, oh hey look, waterbending, Aang can do that too! Just like Katara, Aang is able to manipulate water, and even freeze or thaw it. It didn't take very long for him to master it, and soon he was on to earthbending! Earthbending allows the user to control stone, rock, sand, and even metal. With the help of Toph Bei Fang, Aang was able to master it and he even learned the seismic sense. This advanced sensing ability lets someone detect where living creatures are by feeling the vibrations they make on the ground. Pretty useful for blind people. And last but certainly not least, firebending. Firebending allows someone to use the oxygen in the air to create fire. Firebenders are also capable of redirecting lightning. We've gone through all four and believe it or not, we're still not done because Aang here decided to go, Hey, I want to beat this guy without killing him. And so he invented a new type of bending. Aang created energy bending in order to remove the Fire Lord's bending powers without taking his life. He does need to restrain and hold down his opponent to do this though. However, if an opponent is too tough to pin down right away, Aang can enter the powerful Avatar state. Entering this state allows Aang to tap into the Avatar cycle and gain all the previous knowledge and experience of the other Avatars. In the Avatar state, Aang once turned into a building-sized creature to fight off the Fire Nation. Sometimes he surrounds himself in a powerful wind sphere that's strong enough to blow foes backwards. Aang used this spear to smash through tiny mountains so he could chase down and defeat the Fire Lord. And it's a good thing the Avatar state is used as a defense mechanism because Aang certainly needs it. One of Aang's faults is his durability. Sure, this kid can take a lot of damage, but it's hard for him to stay conscious while doing so. He can be knocked out from too much fire, plus entering the Avatar state and redirecting lightning can leave him quite tired. That's why Aang specializes in dodging. He's very agile and has the speed to redirect lightning like we just mentioned. And just because he can't take powerful attacks doesn't mean he can't dish them out. He was once even able to lift a small city with his earthbending. Aang has defeated several groups of Fire Nation soldiers, and even King Bumi, who has over a hundred years worth of earthbending experience. <sighs> All this stuff sounds so cool! Ah, oh, forget the war! I'm asking Santa for Avatar powers! Alright, but you better be a responsible Avatar. Of course I'll be a good Avatar! I mean, who do you think I am? Korra? Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me she exists. <laughs> Sorry, let's just move on to Poe so we can stop thinking about her. Now, check this out. <laughs> Ooh, 
legend tells of a legendary warrior whose kung fu skills were the stuff of legend. Are you just reciting the intro to the first Kung Fu Panda movie? M maybe. Oh, come on. Let me have my fun. It's a cool intro. Well, I guess that intro wasn't exactly misleading. Meet Po, the legendary dragon warrior. Despite his rather flabby body, this panda was able to become one of the most unlikely heroes in fiction. Thanks to Master Shifu, this Kung Fu fanboy was able to master the art and be the dragon warrior he was always destined to be. Po is a very skilled fighter who has quite a talent for improvising. Whatever the environment has to offer, Po will use it to his advantage. It's a bit of a cliche for kung fu movie protagonists to have special moves, and Po is no exception! Some of these rely on his teammates, but on his own, Po has techniques like the Feet of Fury. These super speedy kicks allow him to take down multiple foes in a flash! He learned the Golden Lotus Clap, which can blind the victim until the technique is reversed. The Fluttering Finger Mind Slip can erase short-term memories from the victim. Turn to sweep the barracks, and this time, don't just wait for the wind. I coughed up dust for weeks. Uh, what was I saying? You were saying that you really wanted to sweep, even though it's my turn. <laughs> but you know what? I'm gonna let you do it, since you're a pal. The thundering wind hammer lets Poe throw a powerful ball of green energy. There's the Mongolian fireball, which acts like a tiny black hole. And believe it or not, none of these are even his ultimate technique. That title belongs to the Wuxi finger hold. You're bluffing. Shifu didn't teach you that. Nope. I figured it out. Skadoosh. This technique affects the victim's chi so much that it becomes too much for their physical body to handle. And it's all done with a simple flick of the pinky. Good thing it requires little effort. Even climbing up the stairs is a chore for this guy. That flabby body can't possibly be the easiest thing to haul uphill. It's useful for defending against nerve-based attacks though. Not to mention, it's a great weapon of offense too! Kersplat! And despite the size, he's quite agile. He's able to leap across entire towns in no time at all. He can even run so fast that he can light his own hands on fire. Oh, you want to talk about fast? How about we tell them what Poe did when he mastered Inner Peace? Inner Peace is an ability that allows one to harness the flow of the universe. He can control the flow of a single raindrop to the flow of even the deadliest cannonball. That's right! After mastering Inner Peace, Poe was able to redirect cannonballs that could destroy ships! Mastering the flow of the universe wasn't enough for Poe. He later went on to master the energy of the universe. After suicide bombing Kai by using the Wuxi finger hold on himself, Poe became a spirit warrior and mastered Chi. Poe's Chi is so powerful that his aura alone lit up the entire spirit. It was even enough to overpower Kai who could previously hold all the Chi of the Masters in China and the Spirit Realm combined, including Master Ugwe. And once you've seen what Poe has lived through, you'd understand how his Chi is so strong. He's been burnt several times, survived falling down hundreds of feet's worth of stairs, and survived multiple several story falls. He survived being punched through a massive stone structure so hard that it shattered. And remember those cannonballs he redirected? Well, before he mastered Inner Peace, he took a point-blank direct hit from one of them. Poe certainly lives up to the title of Dragon Warrior. Let's see which hero is more legendary, Aang or Poe. It's time for a fictional fight! Now, free the five! Disc of destruction! What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here. I want to give a special thanks and shout out for Rampage Animations for doing this fight for me. He's greatly improved since the last fight he did, and he did very well for the very limited post sprites there were. <laughs> so even if you don't like the animation, give him a round of applause and subscribe to his channel, and keep watching because he'll greatly improve more and more in the future. I know it. Now let's get on to the fight. I'm the Dragon Warrior.
Well, 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 what a surprise. Surprise? Pfft, scrawny child versus fully grown bear? Who did you think would win? All right, all right, no need to get snappy. Since you think it's so easy, why don't you start explaining how Poe won? With pleasure. Both Poe and Aang had great power and could dish out some heavy punishment, but Poe was the only one who could take that punishment. Correct. Poe casually remained conscious when getting punched through a gigantic rock hundreds of times his size. Meanwhile, Aang gets knocked out from lightning and fire and gets sent to his hands and knees after getting hit against a mountain, and it didn't even break! Aang's airbending may be strong to lift human beings, yet that hardly compares to the weight of a fully grown panda. And while it can smash through mountains, Poe can easily take it. Remember that rock thing we literally just mentioned? Firebending wouldn't be as much use as Poe survived being burnt multiple times. Poe could easily redirect Aang's earthbending with inner peace, and the Mongolian fireball would take care of Aang's waterbending. Not to mention, Poe displays a bit of earthbending himself. When he masters Chi, he raises several rows of stone pillars. And he does this without his hands. This will help him keep Aang from pinning him down for energy bending. Even if Aang managed to energy bend Poe, it would most likely fail and Aang would lose his bending instead. Aang has only used energy bending twice on inexperienced users who can't even energy bend themselves. Meanwhile, Poe is a complete master of his own energy. I think I mastered Chi. Oh, well, of course you did. Or he could even overflow Aang with so much chi that his tiny body can't take it. Plus, there's nothing stopping Poe from making Aang go blind or making Aang forget what he's doing. And if you still don't believe us, did you know that Poe is technically immortal? Yup! When he killed himself to bring Kai to the spirit realm, he was able to go right back! Wait, I can go back? Who knows? I've never tried. If Aang dies, he stays in the spirit world, and the role of the Avatar is passed on to someone else. I can hear the Avatar fans now. Aang lost all Kung Fui. The winner is... Poe. Who do you think you are, Panda? Who do you think I am, Peacock? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? Get ready for the next battle. I couldn't think of a good trailer idea, so instead let's build it up with a drum roll! Here we go! Here we go! Drum roll! And...